What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think of the discussion in the comment section below. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, or you're living in Iraq and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. If you're watching this video live here on a Thursday, make sure you say hello. In the chat box, your participation is always welcome. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss when I go live or drop a video. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome in. And I hope you're having a great week, a great evening. I have to admit, beautiful weather out there today. Uh, I've got to admit, I feel like it was in the 50s today. Um, let's see what it is now. Yeah, it's still 56 degrees. Very nice day. Um, looks like it's going to cool down over the next couple of days. However, around here, it's been nice. A couple of things right off the top. I um, want to kind of update you on what I got going on. Latest video this week, my podcast dropped here on the channel, Aryan Brotherhood. Talked about the Aryan Brotherhood, Barry Mills, John Gotti, that whole fiasco. One of my favorite shows I've done. Make sure you check that one out. I feel like I put a lot into that show, so make sure you check it out. Also today, I started releasing a new video series I'm going to start doing on athletes whose careers were cut short due to their behavior off the field. Generally, people that have committed crimes and ended up going to prison. The guy today is a very sad story, and I urge you to check it out. I talked about a guy, Lawrence Phillips, who at one point was one of the best running backs in college football. He won two national titles at Nebraska, was drafted in the top 10 by the St. Louis Rams in 1996. And 10 years later, he was doing 31 years in state prison, ultimately leading up to a night that would change his life forever. Um, so make sure you check that out. Uh, really sad story, but an interesting one that needed to be told. We'll do plenty more in the coming weeks and months. Um, all right, let's say hello to some people. I want to get to some uh, Gene Barella news and kind of put a bow on Gene Barello for the next six months or so because – He's in prison, so there's nothing else we need to say about him. But I really want to talk about what went on at his trial and really just some of the news that was reported around this. This is the norm anyway in media nowadays. Uh, and on social media, this stuff is out of control. Reporting stuff just to report it, not having the right information. And, um, you know, talking a little bit about more about where Gene is. Uh, and I also want to get in tonight, too, and I need you to help in the chat. Who is the most ruthless mobster of all time? I have my choice. I want to hear yours. Not yet, but in a little bit. Uh, so come in, come say hello, and come hang out with me tonight. If you'd like to give to the channel, anything you give is appreciative. Uh, it goes a long way. I have to admit, guys, um, I've, I've told you guys, and, and generally when I tell you guys I'm going to do something really cool, I deliver. Um, I'm working on some really cool things that's going to involve travel. So anytime you guys can give to the channel, it means a lot. Um, if you'd like to send a super chat, you're welcome to it. I'm also going to put my cash app uh, in the, the chat box if you would like to, um, if you'd like to donate to the channel. Anything is greatly appreciated and goes a long way to supporting us. I put out a lot of good videos, so make sure you do that. 146 people already. We're only about three minutes into the show, and I haven't even gotten to the show yet. So welcome in. Thank you for being here. I hope that number only goes up. Jared Sanders. Uh, hey, Jeff, hope you're having a great evening. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate that. I hope you are as well. And by the way, this is a live show. So if you're watching us on repeat and you're saying, why is he saying hello to everybody? Well, because it's a live show. Uh, Miss can't be wrong. You know, I got to admit, I've got to admit, and I'll say this very openly. I want to interview Miss can't be wrong. Do you think she'll do it? I'm fascinated by Miss can't be wrong. What does she do all day? I want her life. She's a, a very loyal person to a lot of people in these shows. And I'm curious about her. I'm curious about a couple of people. But Miss Can't Be Wrong, I'm most curious about. Maybe she'll interview with me. I don't know. Guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, that said, she's anonymous. And I'm sure she's happy being anonymous. Uh, Dave, how are you, man? What's up? Salute to you as well. Uh, Lawrence Mormon says, hey, Jeff, I'm watching from Thailand. Wow. How about that? You might be the farthest person that's ever watched my show. I don't know if I've ever had someone farther. I guess Australia, but Thailand's pretty damn far as well. Billy, hi from the UK. What's up, man? Uh, UK is pretty far away as well. 
Junior Lollipops. That's a great name. By the way, there's a gangster called Junior Lollipops. His father was called Senior Lollipops. Um, so a little piece of mob history, Colombo crime family. Jesse Roth, how are you? I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? Uh, Jeff, I hope you're having a fine hour. Same to you, Jade Walk. Uh, I hope you are as well. 168 people. Keep them coming. Hit that like button. And say hello in the chat. I love the participation. Innocent gang member says, hey, Billy. Uh, innocent gang member. All right. Well, you're a gang member, so I don't know if you're innocent, but hopefully you're reformed. Um, maybe my phone is messed up. Salute mob tube. Jeff, what's up? No, I, I think your phone's fine. Uh, Pavlo Vidaev, what's up? How are you, bro? Nice to meet you. Uh, Kenneth Johnson, hello from Eastern Kentucky. What up, Kenneth Johnson? That is interesting country there, uh, Eastern Kentucky. Definitely a, a interesting place, I'm sure. Uh, Root Irish, what's up? Joe Root, how are you? What's up, my brother? I just finished watching the Lawrence Phillips video. I enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I really um, enjoy doing those sorts of things. You know, anytime I can get out of, you know, some of the, you know, mob or cartel content, it's always great. So thank you for that, Lawrence Phillips. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, I urge all of you to check it. I know it's a little different from the normal content that I'm doing, but, you know, I'm trying to grow some of the content here by doing other things other than the mafia. But I will be back to the mafia on Saturday. I'm going to get back to the norm in videos again. I haven't done kind of a biography in a long time. Um, I think the last biography I did was um, maybe it was Tommy Patera, maybe two, three weeks ago. Uh, last week I did the food video, which I don't know. I thought I thought it would do a little bit better, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, I've noticed there's never, um, you know, there's never an exact science to YouTube uh mob entertainment group what's up how are you uh all right let me before i get into the rest of the comments i want to talk a little bit about uh gene barello who uh yesterday was sentenced and look don't let anyone tell you different i was the first to have that information um i put it out as soon as i got it and i got it from a trusted source and was dead on the money now a lot of people were very confused as to what was going on here is something that we need to make sure we understand Gene Barella was not remanded as soon as he walked in the building. That's not how that works. You don't get remanded. Okay, in this country, here's how the justice system works. In certain cases, if you have to face a Vosser hearing, a violation of supervised release, you are in turn, you're coming from your home, right? In this case, Gene was coming from Florida, okay? It's pretty simple. Gene walks into court. He goes into the trial box or into the where the defendant sits. He goes to court. He's either found where he's not going to go back to prison or he's going to go back to prison. At that point, he is remanded. Okay, It doesn't work where you walk in and they say, oh, wait, you're here. Get in handcuffs. It doesn't work like that. Everyone is awarded to stand in front of a judge and they're given a penalty or non-penalty. It's pretty interesting and pretty easy. But you're not remanded when you walk into a courthouse. That's not how it works. Um, a lot of people wondered as well, what does the stuff in May mean? Okay, Gene will have to face um, a possibility of more charges, okay, and they will run concurrent with his six months. Now, it is possible that Gene will not get any other prison time, and this will be all he has. That said, there are some interesting things that he will face. He claims that in some of his ramblings that they're not true and that never happened um, and whatnot. But I do want to talk a little bit about what Judge Block said to Gene Barello uh, in a court yesterday. As we know, Gene used to host a podcast called The Johnny and Gene Show. Now, according to Judge Frederick Block, he would say to Gene, quote, glorifying the mob is one thing. We've watched Godfather 1, 2, and 3. Maybe this is 5. But there comes a time when we need to stop. Now, remember, Gene also violated the fact that he was associating with felons through his podcast, something that he's not allowed to do due to the fact that he's under supervised release. Again, we have to remember what supervised release means. Supervised release means the government is giving you the benefit of the doubt and saying, you know what? Our prisons are too full. We are not going to keep you here any longer. But what we're going to do is we're going to let you go onto the street, but you have to maintain rules. You can't drink. You got to get a job. You got to check in with people. 
They're giving you a favor here. They didn't ask you to commit crimes. You commit crimes. And then not only did they say, you know what? Due to the deal you made, we're going to let you out. We're going to make you have some supervised release first. Didn't have to do that. Gene could be in prison right now awaiting out his sentence. And that's what I feel like Gene doesn't seem to understand. Um, I've said before, and I'll say it again, I truly do hope Gene gets some of the help that he needs. I do think he has uh, you know, some sort of issues that he needs to figure out. Um, you know, whether it's anger management, whether it's dealing with some of his problems, whether it's getting under some, uh, some sort of medication. Um, but, you know, he's got to do something and hopefully he's going to make some changes. Um, now, in interesting Gene Barello fashion, it wasn't Gene he was blaming for why he acts the way he is. No, actually, it came totally different. Gene Barello, in typical Barello fashion, blamed everyone else for his behavior. Brella would say, quote, you want to know why I went out there speaking on his YouTube antics? Quote, I'll be honest with you. Every other cooperator is on there and I'm not allowed to. Sammy Gravano is on there talking about killing people. Okay, so why can't this guy just take responsibility and say, you know what? I definitely violated the violation of supervised release. I'm sorry, judge. I'm going to behave. Maybe the judge will say, you know what, bro? You're trying. And even though you're an idiot, I'm going to give you a couple of months, but it seems like maybe you're turning a new leaf. The reason they are allowed to do it and you're not is because you are on supervised release and they are not. It's not hard to understand. It's just like I can do certain things when a person that's on probation can't. They're on probation. I'm not pretty easy to understand. There are rules and regulations that you need to follow and you're not following them. It's pretty easy to understand, Gene. Now, uh, Gene also, in weird fashion, threw another cooperator under the bus. You always, and I'm sure Sammy loves it because that's free promotion for Sammy. Um, but the difference between Sammy and Gene is twofold. Um, Sammy is not on supervised release. He is free to do what he wants. Uh, and B, um, he is not under indictment. <laughs> it's pretty easy to understand. Uh, now, Gene Barella would also say uh, some other things, um, but the judge would follow up by saying, essentially, I don't like being made a fool of. It bothers you, of course. That's the ens essence of trust. Now, Gene's lawyer would actually request that her client get the weekend to kind of hang out with his friends and turn himself in next week. According to Judge Block, he would say, quote, under the circumstances, I'm not comfortable setting him loose. Currently, Gene Barello is at MDC Brooklyn. His registered number is 897-49053. So if you'd like to write Gene Barello, make sure you write him. You can find his information on the federal prison database. He is probably on uh, floor five. Uh, if you know anything about rule uh, floor five, that's where they put people like Gene Barello, uh, people that cooperate with the federal government. Uh, and, you know, he'll do his time. It's not a ton of time. It's six months. Uh, he'll be out by, you know, summer. If you're going to go to prison, this is probably the time to go. There ain't nothing going on anyway. Now, that said, Gene does live in Florida, so it's a little bit different. But, um, look, this is kind of the final thing I'll say on Gene, bro, and then we'll kind of take some of your comments and move on from this because we feel like we've talked about it enough. But um, I've talked to Gene. I know Gene. Um, I'll admit Gene is, he can be difficult to deal with. I know that uh, I'm not in the best of place with him currently. However, um, the truth is, you know, anytime someone makes a mistake, whether I agree with what they did or not, they're all deserve it of another chance. And I say that about most people, you know, other than people that kill people and, you know, rape people and stuff like that, those people deserve to be in prison and never deserve to breathe another breath of fresh air. But when you're people like this, there is a possibility that Gene can come out and do okay. Um, you know, he obviously had a job, he had friends, he had something. I think he needs to again get on some medication. I think he needs to obviously pick better women. Um, the women he picks, it, it's almost like oil and water, it's like fire and gas, it just doesn't mix. And um, you know, I'm not the best at doing that myself, but I think for me, I think. I know the difference between right and wrong. And 
you know, I know he still feels like, you know, people just don't understand him and whatever, but you got to get some sort of mentor. You got to eventually grow up. I mean, the truth of the matter is Gene Barello is 38 years old. He's not 25. He's not 26, 27, 28. He's 38 years old. It's time to grow up and take some responsibility for your actions. And remember, this is not the only thing Gene Barello has done. I mean, think of some of his behavior allegedly with some of these accounts on the internet and things like that. It's just not the type of behavior that a 38-year-old should be engaged in. And that's all I'll say as an outsider looking at the situation. I've talked to him before and I told him, like, I feel like you could have some success, man, you know, whether it's through acting or, you know, maybe, you know, being some sort of, um, you know, podcast host eventually. If he had just played by the rules, he'd be off supervisor at least and he wouldn't have to worry about who he can consort with and who he can't consort with. Gene always talks about, you know, my life, you know, you know, with John A. Light and some of the stuff he was doing. He was doing a good job. It's a shame that he kept violating because if he didn't, he wouldn't have to deal with this stuff anymore. It's almost like when you know you need to lose weight and you just kind of put it off because it'll never affect you deep down, but it's slowly affecting you and it's killing you. You got to just say, you know what, I'm going to wise up and just get, get rid of this stuff and get over it. Or it's like taking a shot. Nobody wants to take a shot. But if you don't take shots, you're going to have problems. You just got to you got to take the jab and you got to do it. You know, you got to get your hepatitis shot or, or whatever. You know, in, in Gene's case, you got to go to prison. You got to take the time and you got to live with the decisions that you made. And hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll decide that I want life different for myself because I was given the ultimate uh, gift. Gene Barella should probably be, probably do the next 25 years of his life in prison for the crimes he committed. Keep in mind, he was robbing people at gunpoint with uh, violent weapons. He got a break. And this is the break and the, 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 the report he's given back to the, to the federal government. We know the feds don't work fair a lot of the time. But in Gene Barella's case, who is he to complain about the federal government? They've done everything they can to give him a, a, a break. 294 people in here. Welcome in. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let me take some of your comments, see what you're up to tonight. I also want you to get thinking. Who is the most ruthless mobster ever? Falcone Transportation says, how you doing? Thanks for another great live cast. Thank you. Appreciate that, my friend. Uh, Schmucky, hello from Yucatan, Mexico. You have fans in Mierda. Uh, yep, I believe you've told me that. and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, it was, Joe Root. Yes, it was. Uh, yo, Jeff shout from Maryland. What up ATB? How you doing, bro? Ruger 104 says, what's up, Jeff? I've been here since the beginning. Love your show. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. How about this? Joe Pesci's here. Interesting. What's up? How are you, Joe? Um, William Milburn says very good job on the AB show. Thank you, William. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you uh, much. John DeGrazia, my man, you're always here. I hope you're doing well, bro. Um, Thank you so much. Um, great video today on the late Lawrence Phillips. Thanks, Root Irish. Appreciate you, brother. Ned, what's up? South London in the building. I love that. Uh, OC says, yo, Jeff. What's up, OC? How are you? Um, by the way, there's my cash app if anyone would like to donate. Um, Sharon Alcala. Hope you're having a nice evening. Always enjoy your live shows. Thank you. Appreciate that, Sharon. Thank you so much. Spit Shine Tommy. Wow, we have Spit Shine Tommy and we have Joe Pesci in here. What are the circumstances? Uh, how you doing, Jeff? What's up, Spit Shine Tommy? I uh, hope those uh, shoes are Spit Shine clean. Uh, Mike Oxlong says, what up, Jeff? Great show from East New York, Brooklyn. Longtime listener. First time live. Well, how about that? Thank you for being here, bro. I hope you enjoy our content here today. Um, and guys, don't share your answers just yet. I want to get to that in just a second. A Wicked Pizza, how the hell you doing? I'm doing well, man. Uh, Miss Can't Be Wrong says, I'm nothing special. Trust me. I just find you interesting, Miss Can't Be Wrong. I, I notice you're always in like some shows, and I'm curious, like, what do you do for a living? You know, are you retired? Like, what's your life like? Uh, Rob Fasoli says, always good to catch a live hope all as well. Appreciate that, Rob Fasoli. Thank you, bro. Welcome in. Um, AT says, Australia. How about that? <laughs> Michael Vincent says, I'm watching on the moon. Suck it, Thailand. How about that? 
the first person to ever listen to something on the internet from the mood and they're listening to this sit down. How about that? I love it. Uh, Spitshine Tommy says, John Elite is the most ruthless Don. Um, yeah, guys, listen, let's try to be professional here. Let's try to have a normal conversation um, and, and just uh, kind of go that way. Uh, yep, what's up, man? Catching you live for the first time, but every podcast I catch and YouTube video. Well, I'm glad to hear that, A-Rod1210. Hope you're enjoying it. Uh, Miss Campy Wrong says, I can assure you I don't have a criminal record. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. I will say, Miss Campy Wrong, though, just stay in the shadows. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, who's texting me? What do you want? Um, oh, it's RJ. Hey, RJ. Uh, he's saying drop a link. I don't know if he wants to come on the show or what. Um, the Wasted Talent series started off fire. Great mix of sports and true crime. Two of my favorite interests. Oh, good. That was the goal. I'm glad to hear that, Jones, Harold. Uh, Jada Scroggins says, how do you feel about Angel Gotti putting you on blast? Uh, couldn't give a shit. <laughs> She's welcome to say whatever she wants. Uh, she won't ever come on my show, though, so she doesn't really have anybody to complain about. I haven't talked about her either. I don't know what she would be mad about. Um, is she mad about the John Gotti, Aryan Brother thing? Notice in the video, guys, count 49, conspiracy to kill Walter Johnson. Guess where that came from? John Gotti. <laughs> it wasn't made up. It was in the fucking indictment. I don't know if RJ Roger wants to come on the show or what. Uh, Juanito Gotti says, Arelli. What's up, John? Uh, jo Juan Gotti. <laughs> uh, TJ347 says, Jeff, do you have any thoughts on the soft and underbelly episode with Rita Giganti? Um, yeah, so I wanted to actually bring that up. Um, so I liked it. Um, my one knock on Rita is, and I, not that it's a knock, I get, you know, she's doing her thing, but I would like to just hear about like her childhood and stuff. Like, I don't know. I don't really care much about her, you know, other stuff. Um, you know, seems like a nice lady though. And I'm always fascinated to hear her talk. Um, all right. Uh, RJ Roger wants me to drop a link. So I'm going to drop a link. My apologies. I didn't know what he meant by that. I didn't know if he meant like, uh, and this, this is only for RJ Roger guys. Don't, uh, no one join. You're not going to be accepted. Um, or looks like RJ is going to come on the show. So bear with me a moment here. Uh, the Paisan says, Jeff, my man, what's up brother? What's up Paisan? How you doing? Uh, hope you're well. Um, all right. There are so many. I got to admit, I think there's a pretty easy answer to this, which we'll get to in a second after uh, RJ Roger joins. Jeff, good job. Always Brella has violations. Uh, what do you know about the rest? Uh, I don't know much about the rest. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, all right. Let's bring in RJ Roger and see what he's up to. Yes, RJ. How are you? What's going on, bro? Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I just wanted to pop in and tell you something. Okay. I saw you doing this little new series. Yeah, I started it today. It's got to try to try to do some other things, you know. It's a nice idea, bro. I'm proud of you, brother. Thank you. And you're doing some great work with. By the way, that cooking show is great. Go check out that cooking show. That's see, that's the kind of content I'm talking about, guys. New content that people haven't thought of before, and that is a cool idea. Well, I just, I just want to tell you real quick. I ain't gonna be on long. I just want to pop in and tell you, like, you're doing, um, you know. Me and you talk about this privately, so I can say it publicly, but I think this whole genre is in a little bit of a transitional stage a little bit with, you know, views are different. You know, this I think the interest is shifting a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of smell something in the air. Me and you discuss it, but me and you always talk about how we got to, you know, find other creative ways of, you know, new content, yeah. different type of shit. And, uh, you know, I like this little idea you got with these athletes, this, this, uh, uh you know, this little series you're going to do. And you got a lot of ideas you, that you'd be sharing with me that I think is real interesting. So, um, but I just wanted to, I was thinking about you today. You popped in my head about some shit, um, you know, between some of the stuff we talked about last week. I ain't going to say it publicly, but just some of the stuff you've been going, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of us, a lot of the listeners, bro, they don't know a lot of the things that we deal with, you know, in the background, like a lot of what goes into, no content in the background they don't know what it's like to wake up every morning with someone a lot of people bro 
It's like they wake up in the morning, the, they got a comment on their Instagram page. So someone said, I don't like your makeup and the whole day be fucked up. But being in a content game like we're in, you wake up every day, 300 people got something to say about you every day. Every day, seven days a week, you wake up, you, you grab your phone, you got hundreds of comments from the, the, while you were sleeping and fuck you, you're this, you're that. So a lot comes with this, a lot of abuse. So um, I just wanted to call in. and Ain't tell that me, the truth. That, that so is I just want to tell you, bro, but like I tell you, I'm, I want to say it publicly because I tell you, you know, I, I tell you privately, but, you know, stay the course, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank I love you. you. I love, love you. you. I'm, in, I'm in full support of you. Always got your back, bro. Um, keep your head down. Keep going straight. You know, just keep just keep your eye on the prize. Keep going. Keep doing what you want. You know what you want to do. And uh, but you popped in my head today about some about a conversation that that we had. I know a lot of people don't know a lot of you know you, about your personal life. You got family things going on. You got a lot of things that you're dealing with. And then, but to see you every day, you still come on. You hit that live button. You come on. You fucking show your face, you, you know, you just keep going, you keep going. And that's, I always say, in life, you don't fail until you stop. And then you and, and you got the key, brother. You just keep on going. And that's it. That's all we can do. I appreciate that. You're the man. Uh, you are one of the best people in this business. And I, I don't say that lightly because this is a hard one to find uh, really good people in. So I appreciate you saying that. You're doing a great job yourself. And uh, like I always say, everybody go check out RJ and Michael. Seriously. I mean, I, I don't say that lightly. I don't really put my stamp on much of anything here, but um, that is one thing that I, I thoroughly enjoy and like uh, checking out. Uh, I thank you for saying that, RJ. You and I talk all the time, but I always said, I feel like it, it'd be interesting if we could just have our conversations recorded because uh, you and I talk about some really interesting and cool things. And uh, some of which I don't want for public consumption, but um, you're right about that. I mean, people don't know. And I said before, I haven't really talked about it, but I dealt with something a few weeks ago that was a direct result of what I do on here. And, you know, I'm not going to put it out what happened and, and maybe I'll talk about it down the road. But, um, you know, as RJ said, we, we deal with a lot of shit behind the scenes. You know, there's a lot of people that feel like they could just say whatever they want. And, you know, it's hard to come out every day and put a smile and try to do other things. So I thank you, RJ. You're the man. Um, you're a good friend. Bro, just stay the course, bro. In the end, this is the process, bro. You got to bump your, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it, you know, and it's not easy. And I say, and the one thing that all of us creators have in common, all of us, even the ones who don't get along, the one thing everybody has in common, they, they, we all take a lot that viewers and commenters and, and, and people who are just watching, they don't know what a lot of people go through. So, and you, and you got it and you had to deal with something that, you know, it touched me. You really did. And, uh, I, it, it kind of got to leave my skin a little bit because I don't think what you had to go through, anybody should have to go through in this business. So it will never be public, but I just wanted you to publicly know, I'm in support of you, brother. So just keep doing what you're doing. I'll see you probably. I might come to, uh, through to your family and check you out for the Super Bowl. Yes. I'll call you later. We'll talk about that, all right? All right, brother. Stay the course, brother. Okay. Love you, brother. Thank you, man. You're the yep. best. Yep. All right. Later. Uh, RJ Roger. What a kind guy he is. Good friend, too. It's hard to find friends like that. I thank him for coming on and saying those words. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to keep just staying the course, man. Uh, why didn't you go to Scottsdale? Um, I wasn't invited and I don't want to spend five to $10,000 to do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just not my thing, I guess. All right. Uh, innocent gang member four ninety nine. Does bar still know? I don't know who that is. That said, I'm going to take it off the screen because I don't know who that is. And I don't want people's names flashing. Thank you for the $5. Uh, and I appreciate your uh, their kind words, but do me a favor and um, don't mention other whoever that I don't know who that is, but don't don't mention people's names that aren't aren't public. Um, all right, what's up, Bong? How are you, man? Nice to see you. Frank Schweeze is an underrated choice. Yeah, that's a good one. The sit-down is the best OC content out there. Thank you, JC Czar. That's very nice of you. 
Uh, Jay Czar, 300. Thank you. Sam Stefano is ruthless. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, take it easy, innocent gang member. Uh, you're out of here. Sorry I didn't get to that quicker, guys, uh, but I got to it. Uh, Carlos Rivero says, I'm new to the channel. I enjoy the content. I appreciate the amount of research you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. I try to. I try to put in as much time as I can. Uh, 311 people in here. Welcome in. Hope you're enjoying the show. Feel free to jump in the chat if you feel like chatting. Um, yep, I took care of it, Miss Campion. Wrong. My apologies. Uh, Maddie J, what's up? I try to keep the comments waiting so I can get to them. Um, good to see you, Matt. Thanks for watching, man. Jacob Peacock says, I arrived late. Hairline is looking sharp. Appreciate that. Straight. Uh, Joel Kirkner says, does the East stand a chance versus the West after all these trades? Um, yes, I think they surely do. I think the, I mean, the Bucs and the Celtics, I think, are still the two best teams in the NBA. Uh, the Nuggets, I think, are, are probably the best team in the West. I'm, I'm still going to put them over the Suns. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, see no evil. What's up? Uh, any good pizzerias in Philly besides Tacanelli? Uh, yes, Angelo's in South Philly. Um, I respect you, Jeff. But how can you have Gene on your show, then trash him? Um, I didn't trash him. At what point did I trash him? I'm not friends with these people, dude. <laughs> I don't sit here and play the game of life. Uh, I, I'm not, I, I didn't trash him. I think he, I think he has major problems. I've, I wouldn't say, I would say all this to his face. I've said this to his face. Um, William Brooklyn, I don't know what you're looking to start here, but cut it out. Uh, I watched a story about Reggie Harden, first player went from high school to NBA. Pretty interesting. I think you're talking about James Harden. James Harden didn't go to the NBA. He went to Arizona State. I don't know who Reggie Harden is. Um, Mo Green says, happy birthday, Joe. Uh, all right. I don't know who Joe is, but happy birthday to him. Jeff hasn't had Gene Barello in here. I have had Gene Barello, and I had an interview with him, and I asked him very similar questions to the one I'm, ones I'm bringing up now. Um, what else do we have here? Um, Albert Anastasia was pretty ruthless. Uh yeah, to me, the most ruthless person in the history of the mafia is Anthony Casso. Um, and I say that with utmost certainty. There is no one in the history of the mob that ordered uh, the killing of multiple citizens like he did, whether it was Donald Barstow or Robert Kubeka or uh, Patricia Capazzola, who was the uh, sister of fat Peter Chiodo. He was just a vile individual. I mean, he how many people died? Innocently, Nicky Guido, and we'll, don't forget him. You know, he engineered bombings. I mean, he was a completely ruthless, depraved dude. And I don't think we talk about it enough. You know, any guy, I feel like, can walk up to someone and shoot them. I mean, that's just business. But he did truly diabolical shit. Like, really diabolical shit. And then, to make it even more laughable, he did all that stuff. And then gave everybody up. I mean, if you're going to not make a deal with someone, it's that scumbag. I mean, really, really crazy. Um, Big Jeff on the live. What's up from Montreal? What's up? B-I-C-K. Welcome in. Uh, your show comes on a lot while I'm working. I usually have to catch the replay. Well, thank you. Uh, either way, I'm glad you're here. Uh, shout out from Liverpool, England. Great content. What's up, Chris? Uh, uh, Hughes, welcome in. Uh, Bjorn F. Um, yeah, there's a lot in, in Chicago. Mad Sam, Frank Calabrese, Frank Schwiz. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was definitely a, a violent city for sure. Uh, Jeff, maybe we can talk sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely, Miss Can't Be Wrong. Um, Listen, you're not going to talk negatively about Miss Can't Be Wrong. Don't do it. She's a nice lady. Uh, Michael McDonald, what's up? How are you? Uh, 302 people in here. Welcome in. Thanks for being here. Uh, if anybody would like to give to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, and, uh, yeah, make sure you hit that like button. Tommy DeSimone wasn't made, but he was feared and ruthless. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Definitely would kill anyone on site. Joshua Zelinsky, what's up? Will Fulton, what's up from Toledo? Love the content, longtime listener. Thank you, Will Fulton. I appreciate you. Clip says, this guy doesn't know shit. Um, 
Yeah, well, you're here. I always see you here. Uh, best OC content out there. Thank you, my man. RJ Rogers, a well-spoken and intelligent guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Very uh, kind dude. Uh, and definitely great to be around, man. I've, I've spent many a nights uh, out in the town with him. Good guy. Uh, good friend as well. Um, I think I've said hello to you, Falcone. Well, either way, welcome in. I watch it so much and my wife knows the intro by heart. Are you talking about my shows? That's pretty cool. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Gene violates the rules. You got to pay for that. Uh, sure. Absolutely. These lame Gotti Simps or Mafia fanboys have never had anything to do with it, but they act tough because of her name. Uh, yeah, right. And her you know, name means nothing at this point. Uh, who is more powerful, Nikki Barnes or Frank Lucas? Um, I mean, they were both pretty powerful as far as in the drug trade. I would say probably probably Frank Lucas. I mean, Frank Lucas had to connect directly. Nikki Barnes is going through the Italians. So I would say uh, Frank Lucas. Um, bear with me, guys. One second. Um, all right. Um, what do we have here? What's up, Jeff? Hyped about the new series you dropped today. First video was very good. Thank you, Kyle Trout. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a long one, but I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I don't think it's a beef. I think it's definitely an issue. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, anytime you can get new content, I think that's great. All right. See you later. Frankly, just got a couple of trolls in here tonight. Uh, that's it. We'll deal with them. Yeah. Frankly, has gone. He's gone. That's true. Maybe I'll make Miss Camp... Should I should I actually get a moderator? What do you guys think? I feel like it would be nice to to have one just so I, you know, if I miss something, then get them out quickly. Uh, maybe I'll talk to Miss Campion wrong and we can figure that out. Hi, RJ. You do a great job. Yes, sir. All right, man. You're just a hater. We'll see you later. Listen, guys, you come in here and just you can say what you want. But when you're just a complete douche, you're out of here, man. I don't got time for your negativity. Life's too short to have negativity all the time. Uh, my man checking in from South Louisiana. What up, Paisan? Um, what else do we have here? Uh, hey, Jeff. Much love, RJ. Yeah, what's up, Greg Jenna? How you doing? Yeah, man. Thank you. It's really a sad story. Hey, Joey Kanish. How you doing, bro? Dario Ruggiero, what's up, Dario? Says all is well. Just popped in. No doubt this will be great content. Grazie. What's up, Dario? Thank you for watching, my man. Oh, yeah, I always have my friends back, man. You know, him and I uh, root for each other. We help each other, you know. Uh, no, we have Joe Pesci again. So many Joe Pesci's in here tonight. How about that? No, I've never seen that. Jeff, how long have you been studying mob stuff? You seem to know everything about every crime family or mobster ever. Um, eh, pretty long. Probably like, you know, five or so years. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I don't really know. Why are we still talking about Angel Gotti? Who cares? Um, I mean, let her just talk about what, whatever. Like, who cares? Thank you, Craig Tracy. What's up, my man? Chris Hughes, between you, RJ, Michael, and OC Shorts, you have the genre not nailed down. No need for anyone to go outside of that chair for what you need about all things OC. You're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. A couple of really great uh, content creators in that group, and you're 100% right. Wouldn't it be amazing if we get all of us together to do content? How cool would that be? Maybe it's an idea. I know you guys would pay a couple of dollars a month for that. One-stop shop, 
all of us doing content, that'd be dope. Have you ever met Mikey Scars? I've never met Mikey Scars, but I've, I've talked to him many times. Uh, no freaking ZD now. What's up? That's a great name. No freaking ZD now? It's fucking ZD now, but yes, that's funny. Uh, Troy Alexander says, are you ever going to do an episode on La Corporacion and Jose Battle and the Cuban mob? Yes, uh, probably at some point. Uh, they were bigger than the numbers racket. Uh, you know, it's funny. They used to call um, Los Zetas and the golf cartel La Compania. So they, they use those names a lot, Spanish gangs. Uh, but yes, sure. Jose Battle, for sure. Um, all right, guys. Um if, if you're not, don't come in here and mention other people. I don't, if you want to donate to do that, I'm just going to get rid of you. Um, all right. What else do we have here? Uh, he's still around. Uh, he just uh, is very busy with his own life. Um, he's got a lot going on. Uh, he works for a company that uh, is very busy. So uh, we still talk. I just talked to Blackjack yesterday, actually. Um, all right. Do you watch the show BMF? And if so, what do you think of it? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I, I, I like to watch shows kind of when they end. I'm not a big fan of like watching them, you know, as they're, they're on. Uh, Jay Wills. Good to see you, bro. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Jay Will. Welcome in. Jeff, who are you taking in the Super Bowl? Um, I think the Eagles are going to win. I do. I'm a fan. I like the over in the game. I think it's a pretty high scoring game. You ever talk to any of these guys or just think that's supposed to be a tough guy I'm supposed to believe that? Uh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, my man. Uh, love how RJ always has great energy. Yes, he does. He always is very positive. That's one thing about him that I've always noticed. Jimmy the Weasel was a scary dude. Have you seen any videos of him? Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I never. I never felt like he was. Um, like he was scary at all, but maybe I'm not watching the right ones. Best show, Jeff, says Peter Musit. Thank you, Peter. That's nice of you, my man. Danny Myers, what's up, bro? Hey, Danny, how you doing? Uh, you didn't trash Gene, Jeff. He told it how it was, respectable. Yeah, I thought so, too. Um, I, I, I think it's tough love, man, which you need to give. Why does every podcast on channels never mention cost of guest? It is a cash in hand thing. Um, because generally you don't pay guests. If you're a good interviewer, you don't have to. If you have something that people were willing to come on to get promotion from, you don't have to pay them. Um, now, some channels can't do that, um, but I, I don't pay people. Um, I agree on Casso. I mean, you have to pick Casso. I mean, there's no one else. He was a diabolical motherfucker. And there are no, there's no, I mean, Casso was on the level of like Italian mob bosses in Italy, Sicil Sicily, um, you know, and get the types cartels. Um, I don't think he would have if I'll tell you this and you better believe this. If Anthony Casso had the ability to kill someone on camera and promote his propaganda, he would have did it. He would have did very well in, you know, Syria or, or Michoacan in Mexico. He would have did really well with that because I could definitely see Anthony Casso. See this right here. This is what happens when you betray the Lucchese crime family. We get the best of wines, the best of foods, and we're going to chaw your fucking neck off. I could see him doing that on camera. And he has some underling, you know, cut someone's fucking head off. See, this is what happened. See this motherfucker right here? This is what happens when you betray the Lucchese crime family. You know, I could see him doing that. Absolutely could see him doing that. Greg Scarpa was one of the worst. Yeah, I definitely think people were, were generally scared of him, you know. I'll admit, I, I don't think there are, and this might come across crazy, but I don't know if there's any, like, they're all lethal people, but they all killed because that was just something they were supposed to do. There are very few gangsters that killed just to do it. Like, they had no, via, you know, they had no um, respect for life. I felt like Anthony Castle was that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was a complete piece of shit. I mean, the biggest, I think the p biggest piece of shit in the history of the mob. There, I don't even think it's close, to be real. 322 people in here. Welcome.
If you have a question for me, please drop it in the chat box. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, Gas Pipe was a total psycho. Yes, he was. Greg was pretty ruthless and was informing too. Truly didn't give a fuck. Um, yeah, but again, to me, the only diabolical dude in the history of the mob was him. I mean, was any Carmen Persco did that shit too? I mean, remember, Carmen Persco ordered the death of a US prosecutor. Vinny Bashiano, he did as well. He had considered killing Greg Andrews, which is a crazy move. And remember, Joe Messino said, What do you have to gain by doing that? And remember, they said that in the wire. When Schringer Bell wanted to kill Clay Davis, Avon Barksa says, you kill a motherfucker like that, the whole world's going to take notice. You just can't do it. You can't kill a cop. You can't kill a, a, a prosecutor, a politician, maybe in Colombia or Mexico. That, that's common practice. But in this country, can't happen. It can't happen. Other than JFK. <laughs> which I think the mob was behind. Um, loved the food episode. Anchovies on pizza. That's how we do it in New Jersey, New York City. I don't think that's how they do it there. Uh, but thank you for the good words. I've never had anchovies on pizza. What's up, wise guy? How are you, bro? He says, what's up, Jeff? In your opinion, who is the most ruthless mobster? Uh, Anthony Casso. Absolutely. Anthony Casso. Hello from Southwest Houston. H-Town, what up? What's up, hey guys? How you doing? Was John Gotti afraid of Gas Pipe Casso? Um, do I think he was afraid of Gas Pipe Casso? I don't know. Probably. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, he was just a fucking lunatic. Well, that's interesting. Um I'm, do you know how to use TikTok? <laughs> I, you can help me on TikTok if you want. Um, Will Fulton says, love the show. Longtime listener from Toledo. Toledo. I love Toledo. Shout out to Toledo. Uh, did it cost you to interview Sammy Gravano? Why are you asking so many questions, Joe Pesci? I, I, why, why are you so concerned about this stuff? Uh, Wise Guy TV salutes says Nagone. What's up, Nagone? Journalists shouldn't be friends or enemies with the interviewer. Exactly. Good point. Very good point. Um, all right. Uh, what's up, Jeff? Uh, Peter from London. What's up, Peter Musit? Man, there's a lot of people giving me free money, but they're going to be blocked because they're mentioning other people, and I don't want to see that. But thank you for the four ninety nine, whatever your name was. Um, uh, we're not doing worldwide. Uh, again, I wouldn't put anyone in the American mob in the worldwide. This guy. I mean, to be really honest with you. When we're talking criminals, right? Now I'm talking about organized crime figures. If I were to rank the top 50 most ruthless people, I don't know if there would be one American mobster in the group. I don't think they hold a fucking candle to the rest of the world. And that's just a fact. There are probably 50 Mexican cartel bosses that are way more ruthless than anyone in the mafia ever. Throw in the fact you have Central America, South America. You ever go to Brazil? You know what they do in Brazil to you? Italy, you know, Bosnia, Albania. What about Dagestan, Chechnya, Syria, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Indonesia? When it comes to ruthlessness, the American mafia is so low in the totem pole, so low. It's not even close. I mean, there are many gangs currently in this country. Betting down right now that are way more violent. When we look back on the mob in America, they really weren't that ruthless, really. I could tell you stories for days about people that it's not even close. And yeah, if we're talking worldwide, I mean, it's not even close, man. Um, you know, people like um, uh, Totorina and De Sera uh, Denaro and Messina Denaro and, you know, uh, all these guys, Giovanni Brusca, you know, the people like that. Yeah, they're, they're, they don't make them like that here. Maddie J, sorry if this is a stupid question, but you could, could you ever tell what you do for betting? Like, what's your process? And how much research does it take? I'm intrigued on how you became a gambler. Um, 
I mean, to be honest, man, like I just, I've been gambling my whole life. And back in 2009, I created a Twitter account. Uh, my dad taught me about a pod, you know, podcast. They were just starting. Um, and I've actually talked about this. You know what I'm going to do, Matty J? I'm glad you asked this. I RJ Roger and I've talked about it. I'm probably going to do some sort of interview with him at some point. We're going to sit down and he's going to interview me. And I'll tell you about my career and how I did what I've done and created what I have and got to where I am and, you know, essentially do this for a living. And I'll tell you about some of the stories that I had, you know, when I went to Radio Shack and bought this, I remember buying this little mic. It was, uh, it was like 1999 and it was a mic that you could plug in to like a headphone jack. And I had a really early generation iPad. And I remember I had a, a table in my living room. I plugged that thing in. And back then you could download this app. It was called Spreaker. It was this like little studio that allowed you to broadcast stuff directly to Twitter in podcast form. I think it was like $9.99 a month for this for the, the system. Um, and um, I remember at five o'clock every day, I would do something called, I think I called it like uh, you know, daily odds report or something stupid. It was a dumb name. And I sat there and I just it had a little chat box on the side, like YouTube, and I did a show every day. You know, and I, I did it live every day at five o'clock and I would go over the card and talk about games. Uh, and then the goal from there was to understand how to do content, like have my face on a camera or talk into a mic and get my cadence down on how to do things. Right. And then I thought, OK, then I'm going to build the following. And I had some a few hundred followers on Twitter by this point. Um, and I started sharing it there and just started trying to trying to grow my base. Right. And then I, I dealt with this company. Uh, it was an offshore betting company. They put out content, you know, broke down games every week. And I remember I emailed them and I said, like, what would it take to get me to on here every week? And um, they told me no for a while. And then I said, look, just let me do one game. You know, I'll come on. I'll give you good information. Um, and the rest is history. I, I built up a following. I started making money off of it. Um, you know, and, and, and the rest is history, I guess. But I'll talk more about that down the road. But that's a good question. Uh, what's up, Walt Licker? How you doing, bro? All right. Uh, I think I answered that one already. Um, can you interview any of the descendants of the websites? I don't know what that means. Hit the likes for a big bro. Yes. Yes. I literally have responded to essentially every person in here, my man. What are you, what are you talking about? Um, I feel like it's doable and super interesting. I don't know what, what you're talking about, man. Big Tuna says, what's up, bro? What's up, Big Tuna? How you doing? Thank you, Matt Yui. I appreciate that. That's really nice of you. Thank you, Benny Jets. Appreciate you. David Donnelly says, love the show. Love from Dublin. Ireland checking in. Love to see it. Um, have you ever done a show on Bumpy Johnson? No, I haven't. At some point I will. I'll be at Xfinity ready to storm Broad Street, Greece, the polls. If they win, uh, have fun, man. Be safe. I was there the last time they won. Uh, Miss Can't Be Wrong is the best moderator. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll have to do that. Uh, that might be a good idea. And Miss Can't Be Wrong is definitely trustworthy and for sure. Um, Uh, Ruggiero Berardo, Boyardo was pretty ruthless. A uh, lot of a lot of old school guys are ruthless for sure. Jeff, if you give a wrench, absolutely, Miss can't be wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna look into it. Maybe I'll do it. I never, uh, I've never had a, a moderator on here, but it is good for nights like tonight where there's a couple of goofs in here acting like assholes. Did Pablo Escobar have any real connection with the mob in the U.S.? Uh, no, not that I know of. Um, the mob never had any connections to drug cartels. If anyone tells you they did, they're fucking lying. Um, there's a guy on YouTube. I've actually talked to him. He's a pretty cool guy. But one thing I don't believe him in is uh, there's a guy, Johnny Mitchell, on YouTube. He claims that he was working with the mafia and the cartel. It's not true. It never happened. Um, very interesting story on the East Coast about something called the Green Top Posse out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Violent crack gang from the 80s. Pretty sure you can find information and online archives. I'll look into it. We'll see if there's anything interesting about them for sure. Javier, I grew up in Chicago during the Sam Giancana days. Anthony Accardo was also the boss until his passing. 
the Bosa brothers are his grandkids. Yes, they are. I've done a, I've done a show on Anthony Accardo. Uh, I think he's one of the most effective mafia bosses of all time. Appreciate that, Nagone. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck David is, but people keep sending me money just to mention him. So you can, I guess you can mention him. I don't know who the hell he is, but uh, I'm, I welcome the money you're giving. Appreciate that, Benny Jets. I have no idea who that is, Jay. Will I, I don't? Who is that? I don't. I don't know who that is. Is OC Shorts based out of London? Uh, he's in England. I don't know exactly where he is. I don't, I don't think I've ever asked. <laughs> Does Mikey Scars blow his nose with Mikey Scar tissue? <laughs> Funny. Uh, B More 410 Natty Boy says, What up, Jeff? Your content is top notch. Well, listen, here's what I first want to say to you, B More 410. Shout out to the 410, Charm City. Bodymore Murderland. I love Baltimore. Also, shout out to you, my friend. This guy, I feel like we would get along, him and I. Shout out to you, my friend. Check you out. And listen, let me tell you something about white men. Let me tell you something about white guys. Any white guy with a black chick, he's got something going on. Take it from somebody who knows. There are two things about white guys. There are two types of white guys you got to respect. I've heard uh, FBS talk about this. Uh, A, the white guy hanging with all black guys, because you know that motherfucker did something crazy to have respect from them. I heard him say that, and he's 100% right. And number two, a white guy that's with a hot-ass black chick. A, you know his dick is huge. And B, he's a fucking G. So shout out to you, 410. Shout out to you. That ain't easy. It ain't easy, B. It ain't easy, bro. Yeah, I don't I don't know who that is, Livin'. Um, but yeah, uh, that's not this type of channel. So don't don't do that in here. Uh I'm checking in from Jalisco. Wow, really? Hey, hey, hey guys, would you want to come on the show right now? I would love to speak to you. Do you want to come on the show? I don't want to put you in harm's way, but that's pretty interesting. Uh, you like the over? Yeah, I do. I think it's a high scoring game. Sal 9708. What's up? Hey, what's up, Sal? How you doing, bro? Yeah, I don't know who Frank Caruso and the why would the Chinatown crew of any North Northwest Indiana? What? What the hell are you talking about, man? I don't know what you're talking about, bro, at all. Strong video on Lawrence Phillips, diggable content and idea. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you. Yeah, I would love that. 290 people in there currently. Yeah, it never gets old for sure. Yeah, people ask me about the Westies. I'll do them at some point. I'll do them at some point. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever do anything on Canada. Maybe at some point. All right, a lot of comments in here, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here tonight. Uh, if anyone would like to donate, please send in the Super Chat. It's very much appreciative. Um, that'd be very nice of you, and it helps. Hey, Jeff. Hey, chat. Tommy Karate had books he studied on killing efficiently. Nikki Scarf and, of course, Roy DeMann, Nino Gaggi. Many of them were never more ruthless than yeah, funny. Um, you had a good comment until you made the dumb comment at the end. Um, yeah, again, I don't think they were all any as diabolical as Anthony Castle, though. Uh, Doc Holliday, you connect. No, I'm not in the mafia. That is not how we do it in New York City, New Jersey. Yeah, I don't know of anybody that likes anchovies, to be honest. Clay Davis would have divert, deserved it. Yes, true. Unpopular opinion, The Wire is better than Sopranos. I don't think that's unpopular. I agree with you. Uh, Gamora is better than both of them. Yes, he was. 
uh, because they haven't really been around since like the 80s. Uh, they were a faction, kind of a Gambino crime family faction down in Baltimore. Haven't been around for years, though. Thomas Bordenero says, great show. Thank you, Thomas. Has the mob ever done a hit in the South? Yes, many in Florida. Pesci, you're fucking weird. Uh, well, he's gone now. He's gone. I got rid of him. And by the way, Caleb Cantrell, you were very negative about Purdue. Uh, Purdue covered. I don't know if you know that, but they covered. Um, you were very negative about that. Yeah, yeah, you can send me an email for sure. Who do you think was the dumbest mob guy, a.k.a. the biggest bozo? Um, hmm. That's a good question, actually. Probably. I'd have to think about it. That may be a good show to think about. You know, a couple of, of imbeciles for sure. I mean, John Sr. would say it was John Jr. He called him an imbecile many times. Uh, have you ever seen the old 60 Minutes interview with Casso? Um, yes. It's, it's actually a very good interview, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, he he's definitely sickening to watch. I will say though, I understand why he was smirking talking about Hydell. Hydell did try to kill him. I mean, let's be honest. I think we always like kind of like we're too like quick to like call him a scumbag for smirking about torturing and shooting Jimmy Hydell. But Jimmy Hydell did try to kill him. So I, I get I can understand why he wouldn't have any issue talking about that. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's interesting bringing that up. Um a week ago in Sonora, which is directly south of Arizona, a one-year-old little girl was uh, shot and killed in a car by a cartel. Um, and the funeral footage was awful. You know, hearing her dad weep as he clutched her coffin, little coffin, fucking horrible, man. Truly sickening. Back in the day, they protected the neighborhood. Uh, I'm not sure who you're talking about. Who protected the neighborhood? All right. Um, can you do any mobster impressions? Uh, I'm not sure I've ever tried. I'm not sure I've ever tried. Appreciate that, Chucky e. O'Neill. Yeah, I don't I don't think he was Anthony Castle. Definitely can definitely a lunatic, but yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. A lot of comments I'm trying to sift through here, guys. Bear with me a minute. Four one zero, yeah, four one zero, exactly. Um, good for him. What what is that any of your business? Whether his wild's big or not. So is that is that how it works, Reaper? According to you, if you're an ugly guy, the only way you can get women is by having money, or you're just good talking to women. You sound like a jealous motherfucker. I hate people that say that, man. Like me, I hear that all the time. I get a hot girl. Oh, he's he's just paying her. It's like, no, she just likes me. Um, shout out to that guy, though. All right. Uh, I'm with a hot Puerto Rican chick. Good for you. Good for you. I don't know. Maybe someday. There's a lot of trolls in here tonight. I've never seen them. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to wait for that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. You got to watch the whole game, bro. You have to watch the whole game. Don't worry about that. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Um, I'm going to 
I've been on here kind of as long as I've been looking to uh, be on here, about an hour. Thank you for all the participation. I, I'm kind of getting confused with all the other conversations going on here. What do I think happened to Frank Matthews? I think he disappeared and possibly could still be alive somewhere else. Dude, what the fuck? White guy got it going on stuff. He's with a black girl and he must have a big dick. Shit is silly stuff to say. Sounds like something the main guy from the Malibu wanted. Shut up, man. Shut up. Then don't watch, man. Yes, I have. It was uh, Nertanios, I believe. Take it easy, Livin. What's up, Michael? All right, guys. I'm out of here. You guys enjoy your evening. Thanks for checking out the show. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for participation. Uh, as always, I appreciate it. I'll see you all next time. Check out my latest video on Lawrence Phillips. Please go check that out. Um, make sure you uh, show love and, and support it. Uh, also, new video coming out Saturday. Make sure you watch. I'll see you later. Peace.